All right, boys, let's talk about the Vikings. So, crack it up. Oh, nice. Tandem double, crack. <laughs> the double tap. There we go. That's all the offensive power. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Vikings uh, last year, uh, I, I'd say a little overachieving. I mean, 13 and 4 was the record. They had the recipe for success from a fantasy perspective. I mean, they threw the tar out of the ball and had. <laughs> Had no defense, uh, you know, no no secondary basically to stop anyone. So they were scoring points from all all levels. The way that it uh, came out was what Kirk Cousins, uh, quarterback six overall. Mm-hmm. He um, uh, tenth in points per game, but he you know he was slinging the rock everywhere. Justin Jefferson, we don't really need to talk about him, right? He's yeah, he was the one one. Um, was he good last year? Core. He was pretty. He was pretty decent. Okay, and. Uh, you know, of course, uh, Dalvin Cook was uh, rumbling, stumbling, somewhat steady. 65% pass, 35% run was kind of what their outlook was last year. The playoff game, obviously, I don't want to talk about it too much. You know, it was it's a it's it's a tough spot, but the playoff game, the first round loss to the Giants, um, I, in in majority, I think was uh, somewhat expected just from the way that that team had been playing. Sure. Um, but you know, on to bigger, better things. So. You know, 2003, still looking up. They cleaned out the secondary in the defense. I know it's a fantasy show, but we got to talk about defense a little bit because they cleaned out that secondary. So they've got a lot of young uh, young guys there, which tells me there's still going to be some success there because I think they've got to they got to learn, they got to gel and and uh, and move forward. Their offensive line um, uh, was. 13th oh it's on there on the screen as 13th uh, last year they're they're projected to slide down a couple spots to uh to 15th which you know we can get into that as we talk about some positional spots but i think for the most part um just from a high level to a 2023 outlook for the vikings i feel like it's it's the same same story maybe a little bit different tune um from the player's perspective but they're uh they're they're set to to wheel and deal from an offensive perspective, which is what we care about. And, you know, obviously at quarterback, we got Kurt. It's his last season. You guys know how I feel about him. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wishy-washy on him just from, from the perspective, but I'm not wishy-washy on him from a, from a performance perspective for this year. I think that he's, he's geared up. He's, he's ready to go. The wide receiving room has improved. They brought in uh, Jordan Addison. They've of course got Justin Jefferson uh kj osborne was uh was decent for them uh yeah. throughout he played uh in some spots far you know from a best ball perspective he's he's a pretty decent target in my my opinion and the wide receiving room is interesting just from the addition of addison the the subtraction of cook i think there's going to be some um you know i, I think justin jefferson still going to get his but my my overall feeling as i was as i was looking at it was uh I, I don't really see too much downgrade in that wide receiving room um, from a from a fancy points projection um, at the end of the season. I, I don't. You guys feel any different on that or? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think I think you're excited about their offense kind of moving forward. Obviously, there's no Dalvin, uh, but you know they're they're from uh, Kevin O'Connell came right in and 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 said that they were going to throw to the running backs a little bit more. Um, and a little bit less running, and that's you know I guess I don't, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it would seem like that's kind of what they did, and they felt good enough to let Dalvin go to not really pay him. I don't think they've made their last move in that running back room, though. That's my concern there. That you think that they're going to add somebody else? I think they kind of have to. I mean, I don't, think so. I don't really know that I'm really all that excited about Guano Chandler or um mcbride mcbride from a backup pers- from a backup perspective I madison think, goes down i think you have madison and mcbride who was 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 a very good pure runner in the sure in that was it you uab uab yeah um just didn't have any catches on his uh resume no there, no it was, it was uab or was it Tulane? it definitely wasn't too late okay, UAB. UAB. uab two lane was sorry it was taji spear sorry go ahead um so you know, I think the running back room is just fine. I think that's kind of where they where they want it. They're kind of seemingly one of those newer generation of teams where they don't necessarily want to put value on that position, especially now because it seems like they're potentially uh, trending in a in a potentially different direction. Where, like you said, they overachieved last year, and 
you know, I, I think that the overall record is probably not going to be as good as, as what you saw from, from last year. That I forget what the number was, but they were in those one score games. They were, you know, 8 0 or some silly number yeah. where they won a ton of one point, one score games. Um, I think Kirk, the offense is going to be just fine, though. I think, I think, uh, I don't think you really lose anything from Thielen. I think Addison can come right in and fill that role. And at this point in Thielen's career, I don't want to disrespect him, but I think Thielen, I think Addison's an, uh, an upgrade. Um, yeah, you saw time. you saw how good you know Hawkinson came right in and, and fit in um, with them last year. So no, I, I I think the offense is going to be right there. It's just not going to be Dalvin Cook at the uh, at the helm at the running back position. It'll probably be Madison as the one A, and then whoever they've. Feel I just can't see them wanting to spend really any money on a veteran coming in there when I don't think they're they don't seem like they're on the up and up to necessarily win anything and it would seem if you're going to cut Dalvin that you're comfortable with you paid Madison a, a little bit and now you drafted McBride and you have these other two guys that you know what you got in them so I, I think I think that room's from from my perspective I think that room's done um, I think well I think in their personnel changes too right they they resigned um, C J Ham which fullbacks are they're coming back boys fullbacks are on their way back in um they signed um josh oliver uh blocking tight end you know he's he and so i think there's going to be some 12 personnel going on there with uh with good athlete too. yeah he's a he's a yeah really good athlete uh tremendous um tremendous blocker and so the fact that the talent may not be there with Madison, but the scheme I think is going to change a little bit for Madison or for that running back room in general. So I, I, I was kind of, uh, I don't know. I was on the fence with Madison, but after digging deeper into it, looking at some of the, the O-line strategy, um, they were, let's see, third down, they were 27th to run the ball and they were second to pass the ball at third down. I could see that kind of changing. I think that, you know, passing the, the just snot out of the ball isn't, it, it's a way to get wins or it's a way to get points, but I don't know if it's a way to get wins. And so I think that they didn't this year. I think that we'll see a flip of um, maybe leaning on the running game a little bit more in those short third, uh, third down plays. I don't know why I can't talk all of a sudden, but uh, in those th- third down plays, I think with Josh Oliver, with Ham, and, and the way that they're, they're playing, I, I believe that that 27th, you know, worst, I guess, or second in the past, I, I think that those numbers are going to get closer together. And from Hawkinson's perspective, I mean, he came in and I know that, uh, you know, Casey, you're big on, big on Hawk. I, 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 I don't really see where I feel like they were using him to run through the air a little bit. And some of his, you know, his, his, his utilization, some of his utilization was target depth was a little bit lower than what he was. A um, dot drink. Yeah drink uh in in detroit and so anyways i i I don't really feel like his his presence isn't not gonna (laughs) he's 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 gonna perform at the same level that he did last year even with me saying that his his a dot was uh was lower than what it was in in detroit uh, he's he's definitely part of this offense and um i you know he's he's a tight end to have tight end two last year you think you think that's repeatable I think it's absolutely repeatable. Yeah, um, yeah. I, that's that's why I, I like him because I think the volume will be there, and I think you know you show up a third of the season through. What do you show up week six? Um, I don't have that number necessarily in front of me. Week nine, sorry, week, traded week nine, traded yeah. week nine. So I mean, half half season. Yeah, I mean, I, I just I I think that some of the lower A dot could also be attributed to hey, you know, let's just go call some some basic shit here until you know now you have a whole off season to get him acclimated to 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 scheme for him like you your whole offensive playbook you know ha- had irv smith in there you know right. so, you know so, and then they went out sometimes pro, sometimes yeah and proactively <laughs> yeah. uh traded for him um and i think uh i think you could see the a dot go up a little bit you use as a little bit different style of a weapon uh but i think the volume could easily still be there it seemed like kirk was pretty comfortable uh going to him <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a touchdown because I, I, I did run, uh, tried to, he, he was the, behind Kelsey, he was the second target at tight end. So it makes sense that he would be second overall for, for the year. And so with it, the addition of Addison, like we were saying with Thielen, I could see that, uh, you know, some of the juice coming off of him a little bit. But, I mean, I, I still think he's right in that top top three tight end, 
at the end of the year uh, points wise and and um, easily with some touchdown with the way that the offense would be scheming. Now you got to cover Addison. You know, I, like I said, they were doing some 12 personnel. So I think the running game is going to have more of a presence. I could see him also uptick in some of his touchdowns as well. So, yeah, I, I would agree there. I think uh, at, I think Thielen had 107 targets last year. I think mm -hmm. maybe Addison's at, at 120, 130 maybe this season. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot. But I mean, Thielen was, you know, probably not quite where he once once was. So I mean, I think you could see Addison all the way up to 120. But I'm, that that doesn't scare me off. Once I knew that that number was triple digits for Thielen, I it didn't. I was a little scared of what Addison could be. But even if Addison's at that number, I'm all right with it. Like I'm I'm mm -hmm. I'm 100 percent on board with Hawkinson. And and again, I I know some people out there in the fantasy space want to tell you all these silly numbers and metrics and that Hawkinson's never been elite. And so that he can't be elite again. Well, he was sure as fuck elite last year Tied when in they two. traded for him. Uh, so there 85 he was. targets yeah. after the trade. Yeah, he was elite and he was, he was really good in spots throughout his career in Detroit with Stafford and, and couldn't stay healthy, didn't stay healthy and it, it, it didn't work out. And they, the bears or the uh, lions got something for him and it seems to work out for both teams. Um, yeah. And, and now Hawkinson, I think is about to just reap the benefits of being, uh, you know, I, I've, he should for sure be, be drafted above Goddard. Um, I think he, he should be the, you think the, he's properly rated as a tight end for a hundred percent. I wasn't, I wasn't at first, but uh, since we've been through the off season and been digging around a little bit and, and seeing some numbers and, and whatnot, then I, I, I for sure think he's properly rated. And I mean, you know, I, I know Lamar loves Mark Andrews, but I mean, he could easily outscore Mark Andrews again. Um, again. You know, you're putting <laughs> uh, obviously Lamar was hurt last year and Andrews missed I think a little bit of time mm -hmm. yeah um, again. but again you're you're you know you're adding a bunch of stuff to that offense and changing how that offense runs where that offense seemed to run through Andrews before and I'm not saying that the Ravens offense won't run through Andrews now but now you at least have options of Zay and Duvernay and uh, Odell and uh, Bateman and hopefully you will get the running backs actually involved in check downs now and and likely and you know so I, I think it I think it's not out of the realm of possibilities that if both are healthy throughout the whole season that you know Hawkinson outscores uh, Andrews this season and is uh, you know a few years younger I believe uh, so yeah I, I I would be fine with taking Hawkinson anywhere from as high as the third round to the fourth round uh, maybe even creeping up into the back of that second round if you're into the tight end premium and you're and the the targets are gold there you know every tight end. No, it doesn't do a whole lot for every tight end, but ones that are the second highest targeted, it's gonna do a lot for that fucking tight end. Is that um, is that a full two tight end? Premium? Oh, it's gotta be. I gotta. I'm gonna need a two point. If it's two or premium. half, doesn't matter. No either. half. You're fucking That's wild. That's not even there. premium, dude. Half. Tight half end premium, is like zero. The back end of the second round. Yeah. You're fucking crazy. Why? It sounds dude, crazy. When when Darren Waller had a ton of targets, a few I don't have the, all the shit in front of me. When Darren Waller had that amount, had the amount of targets he had two or three years ago, he scored like two less points than Devonte fucking Adams, who was the no that's way. just with I'm no uh, way. okay. I'll I will. Pull I'm, that I'm up agreeing with point. you. I'm agreeing with what you're saying. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm no. I'm 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 listening. To what you're, I'm I'm hearing what you're saying, but there's no fucking way that the returning value back there, even as the tight end two, as the at the back of the second round. Right now, the first tight end isn't even going in the second round. So yeah, which is why I'm saying that's crazy. Sure, I mean if you like, a, so if he outscores, I mean Kyle Pitts is underrated right now because mm -hmm. nobody wants to give Kyle Pitts any love, even though he's had two disappointment of seasons. Even though he broke the fucking rookie record his first season, <laughs> um, right? You know, and the next the next season, like they just the pass volume wasn't there, and he got banged up. Like he's fucking awesome. Just relax, Kyle Pitts is going to be just fine. Travis Kelsey's 34 because if he wasn't, he would be in the first round. Uh, and Andrews is 29 and. 29 coming off of a, of a little bit of an injury season. And we're not exactly sure how that offense is going to go. So I think he's a value too. I think at the very least, maybe, maybe saying at the back end of the second is a little hyperbole, but that's right where all those guys are. And I think Hawkinson can be right up there with those in his, and could easily outscore. He could be the tight end. I mean, he's not going to be the tight end one if Kelsey's healthy and, and stays doing what he's going to do. Uh, right. But he could easily be the tight end two again. Uh, and much of to the president of the United States again. And, <laughs> little Forrest Gump reference for you there. Um, so anyway, back to uh, back to the Vikings, the rest of the Vikings. Yeah. What do you got for me, Big D? 
Let's go to Mo for the I, details. That's pretty much where I'm at with the, the, the Vikings from a from a their win total, eight and a half, so they're drop, dropping quite a ways. But again, I think this division's gotten a little better, and then just the schedule, um, who they're playing is going to be tougher this year. So I think eight and a half, uh, we'll say what? Maybe I would probably take the over just because I think that the defense will improve as as it goes along um and the offense is you know i don't i don't think it's going to miss a beat so uh kirk cousins throwing his 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 shoulder his shoulder off he's thrown over 600 pass attempts uh, a year for the last couple of years and I, I don't see that changing and so those target totals sound nuts but uh, what but when you bring it all the way back to what they're actually doing what they're actually passing the ball the amount of times that they're trying to pass the ball i think right all all of our projections are within the realm of possibility so yeah no I, and, I, and they brought in brian flores as the dc uh which i think is a phenomenal hire for them uh, mm-hmm. and i think you know he can he can help I, I think just having him in there as as the guy to lead that defense around um i think is is huge for them so um i think the defense i, I think you're i think you're probably looking at a 10 win team again mm-hmm. i think it's, yeah defense. i think it's you guys are always I, taking the over i didn't take the over with the bears I took right around the same. I said it could easily be over with the Packers, but I wasn't sure. Maybe. What was that number at? Eight seven and, and a half? half for the seven and a half for the Bears and seven and a half for the Packers, and then eight and a half for the Vikings. Is that what you got? Yeah, eight and a half. Sorry. Probably oh. take the over there. Probably say give them nine. Nine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm I'm down with. I'm going. I'll take the over there. I'll pass. I think they finish. Uh, I think they get nine and a half wins. They're, they eight and a half wins. It's not a, you know <laughs> they got a tie. <laughs> they're, they're, they could easily win this division where maybe the Lions are too overhyped and they they're still the Lions and got to get over some things and the Vikings win the division again and that's you know nine going to be a nine ten win team. I think any way you look at it, unless something crazy happens to Kirk D Cousins, Kurt, uh, you know. Yeah, I think that's the key. Is I, I think you know I, I I hate to say it, but even if if. Justin Jefferson goes down. They're definitely going to miss some beats. But if Kirk Cousin goes down, I mean, don't you put that evil in him, Ricky Bobby? Uh, yeah, that's that's a whole different story, right? So seems like so they're going to give. Maybe Kirk will even get another one year deal after this. I don't know what they're going to do because I don't think they're going to be bad enough to be up in the, you know, search for a you know mm-hmm. high end quarterback, right? I mean, right. They could they, they could mess they could mess around with the free agent market as well too. Yeah, and I don't know what that. Right, but that's basically is, Kirk Cousins. You don't want to you want to reset with sure. somebody else, but not probably as good as Kirk Cousins and doesn't I mean, know maybe, your offense. I mean, maybe they go trade for Kyler Murray. I don't know. Mm, that would be fun. That would be. I'm just saying talking. the Cardinals are going to be bad this year. Spicy. George George right. likes his chicken spicy. Let's get out of here. You good, Big D? I'm good. All right. Let's take it to the Alliance. <laughs>